Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Source Code. My name is Deshaun, and today we're going to be looking at hash maps. So hash maps kind of go hand in hand with array list um, and how pretty much how simple they are and how easy it is to start implementing them. So uh, all the code will be available for you guys on GitHub. I'll try my best to make sure it gets up there. But a hash map is basically a map based collection, a uh, collection class that is used for storing key and value pairs. So if you've ever worked with JSON, you know, you'll understand what I'm saying by a key and value. So basically sort of like, um, you can sort of look at it as um, kind of like an, a normal um, variable, right? So let's say we have an integer, our key is going to be our dog and our value is going to be, um, uh, we'll just say um, a shepherd, right? So we have our key, which we identified as our dog or the integer. And then we have our value, which we identify as a shepherd. Well, that doesn't make much sense. So we'll say um, string, that makes better sense. Um, so then we have our value of dog and our string, our, 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 excuse me, our key as dog and our value as shepherd. So a hash map works pretty much the same way. Um, it's basically denoted as a hash map key value. Or so basically what we can say is we can go ahead and just say private static hash map and you can see there that it's already giving us k and v for key and value so we do that by we denote this by using um, the greater than less than signs or the triangle brackets however you want to call them then we have to obviously give our hash map here a name so we will say um grades oh, if i help if we say uh, yeah grades equals and then we're just going to go ahead and say a new hash map all right so now, obviously, we need to denote what our key and what our value is going to be. So our key and value can really be just about anything. A lot of times you'll see this done with something like a UID and then maybe uh, an encapsulation class if we had one. Um, but we don't, so we are just going to go ahead and say a string and a... We are going to go ahead and say a double because it's going to be a grade, so it's going to be... Um, a few different variables here. Now, what we can do here is we can, instead of giving this sort of just this, a generic assignment of just a new hash map, we can actually go ahead and duplicate this and um, we can add these brackets there. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and just add string double here if we wanted to. You don't need to, it's pretty repetitive, um, but it's just sort of one of those extra steps. So do keep in mind that it is not an order collection, which means it doesn't return keys in the same order in which they are inserted into the hash map into the hash map, excuse me, nor does it sort the keys and values. So just keep that in mind. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and say, uh, I want this to be plural because it's gonna be multiple. So we say grades and we'll just say put is how you set values uh, inside of a hash map here. So I can say put and our string is going to be my name or we can even just do it by, we'll do it by class here. So we'll say English and we'll say is a 98.4. I did really well, super, super well. So now we can duplicate this. Uh, we can say science, uh, say I didn't do as great in science. Uh, we'll just go ahead and just change a few of uh, a few of these numbers here just so we got some variation going on here. I'll we'll say 45, oh, give myself such low grades. Um, 80.8, and I think that'll probably be good. So we'll say science, math, really I should switch those around uh, social studies and we'll say Spanish so now we've inputted all these different values into our hash map so how do we go ahead and see these right so similar to how we did it before with array list we can just do, go ahead and do a for loop and so what we want to loop through is our keys right well our values so what we do is we want to get all of our values uh, we could do both. Um, so what we could do here, if we wanted to make this a little interesting, so we could go ahead and say string uh, keys. And then what we can do is we can say grades dot key set. And it's going to give us all of our keys. So now if we want to search for a particular key inside of our hash map, what we can do now is we can say uh, system dot out dot print line class plus keys plus and now we'll say grade and now we can say is grades dot get and now we can get our key 
And then what we can do is we can output that into our console. So if we go ahead and export this, you can see that that English grade, um, so for our class English, we had a grade of 98.4%. For our social studies, we had a grade of 96.4%. And then for our science grade, we had a grade of 58 and so on. But now if we didn't want the keys and we just wanted the values, we could go ahead and do the same thing, but we can just say values and we will just change this to doubles and we will just change this to values. And we'll just go ahead and clear all this out because uh, it's just going to give us our grade this time. So it's not going to give us um, all of our classes. What it's for is just going to output uh, our value. So if we go ahead and export this again. We can see there that it's just going to go ahead and say grade and just going to give us all of our grades. So now you can do some pretty interesting stuff with this. Um, and so now the next thing we want to do is we'll just go ahead and show you how to clear it. So if we go ahead and go here. And if we just go ahead and just say uh, grades and then what to clear it out, we just go ahead and say dot clear, similar to an array list. So if we go ahead and export this now, you can see that it's outputting nothing uh, because there's nothing to output. Um, cool thing about um, hash maps as well is we can actually go ahead and get the size of a hash map. So if we wanted to look at a particular thing or if we wanted to compare size of a hash map for a for loop or something like that, um, we could do it that way too. So we can go ahead and say, grades.size and we can go ahead and export that and you can see that we have a size of five and if we look here we have five values that were inputted into our hash map so that's all i got for you guys today hope you guys enjoyed the video went a little fast um but hopefully you guys got some uh good content out of it and hope you guys learned a little bit more about hash maps we are coming to an end of our java videos here uh, we will be going back to working on some speaker plugins. Uh, we're going to be working on some full scale plugins, some economy plugins, um, maybe some permissions plugins. Uh, basically, just working on full fledged fl plugins since we already have done a lot of tutorials uh, and maybe coming out with a tutorial every now and then uh, about something a little bit more on the just tutorial side that isn't necessarily related to one of our videos. So, yeah, thanks for watching.